Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Cherry Bomb Chicken. And I know what you're wondering, are those cherries on there? No, no cherries were harmed in the making of this recipe. All right, why is it called Cherry Bomb Chicken then? Well, that's because of the brine, which is really what this video is about. So the bane of the backyard barbecue is, of course, dry, flavorless chicken. So we're going to take care of that with a very special brine, which starts with water, salt, and sugar. I'm going to put that over low heat just until the sugar and salt melt. Or dissolve, sorry. Please, scientists, save your emails. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to let that cool down to room temperature while I prep my chicken. All right, so I took one large, free range, of course, chicken. I cut it in quarters. All right, it's on the bone. I'm going to make little, very shallow slashes, two in the breast and two in the thigh, right at the thickest point. Just go through the skin and maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch into the flesh. That's going to help the brine soak in. I'm going to place that in a plastic container, and then we're going to finish the brine. Now, I know the suspense has been killing you. Here's why it's called Cherry Bomb. We're going to use cherry tomatoes as a base for the brine. All right, so that's the cherry part. The bomb part is these habaneros. One would probably be enough. Two, borderline crazy. Three, that's how many we're putting in. And by the way, I'm just kidding. It's not really going to be that spicy, believe it or not. All right, some garlic, some allspice, and then I'm going to pour in our room temperature brine. All right, I'm going to bring that over to the blender. All right, I'm going to blend that until extremely smooth. I want to totally puree all that pepper and tomato and garlic and so forth. Once that happens, pour it over the chicken. It should cover. I'm going to cover that with the lid. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and let that brine for four hours. Okay, four to six hours is fine. All right, I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to lay it on some paper towels to drain. I'm also going to pat off all the brine from the top. I want dry chicken when it hits the grill. While that's sort of air drying for a few minutes, I'm going to make a little bit of an oil rub. Nothing too fancy. Some dry thyme, some cumin, some black pepper, of course, a little cayenne. You knew that was coming. And just a little splash of a neutral oil. I'm using grapeseed, canola oil, something like that. Give it a stir, and that's it. I'm going to brush some of that down on the plate so I don't have to flip my chicken. I'll put the flesh side down. That'll touch the oil. And then I'm just going to paint the rest over the top on the skin side because that's going to be the side that goes down first where I want to get those really nice grill marks. And that is ready for a very hot grill. So my strategy generally with this kind of stuff is to just do a quick sear on the skin side. I like deep black grill marks. I think it's part of the flavor profile. I want that. Or if you want to do it all over indirect heat, go ahead. But I like to give it a nice three, four minute sear on that side. Because of the sugar in the brine, you're going to get beautiful, beautiful grill marks. All right, once that's turned over, then I kind of move them off to the side. See my coals, you can't see it here, but the coals are to the right. So I'm going to kind of nestle those to the left. They're not directly over the hottest part of the flame. I'm going to cover, close my vents about halfway. That'll lower the temperature a little bit. And then I'm going to roast those, basically, over those nice smoky coals for about 30, 35 minutes. When they're very close to being done, I'm going to paint the top with some red pepper jelly. That's right. Every big supermarket has some red pepper jelly. But if you go to a farmer's market, you'll find some really cool ones. All right, now once that's cooked to perfection, and I always recommend you cook things to perfection, I'm going to pull that off on the plate. I'm going to let it rest in a window, ideally one with filtered sunlight coming through it through a swaying tree. Let it sit there 10 minutes. And this was such a beautiful sight. In my head, I heard this music. And I was thinking, that's nice music, but it could use some more cowbell. Into the final stages of cherry bomb chicken. Rested chicken goes on plate next to pinquito beans with some fresh lime. I cut into that breast and I can't express how amazingly juicy, tender, moist, delicious that chicken meat is. I know we use three habaneros, but it's not too spicy. I believe that tomato in the brine gives it a very subtle tanginess. That brine should have perfectly seasoned the inside, so I'm not going to add any salt to the surface. I think it's almost impossible not to have amazing, juicy chicken this way. Think about all those poor bastards doing plain grilled chicken breasts this weekend and really crushing the competition, and by competition I mean your neighbors, is what being an American is all about, and that's what we're celebrating this holiday, okay? So give that a try. 
All the ingredients are on foodwishes.com, of course. And as always, enjoy and have a great 4th of July.